In this video, I'm gonna show you how to adjust the settings of your Google Home Max, Google Home, or Google Home Mini. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. And in today's video, we're gonna dive in and check out all the settings that you have for your Google Home device, whether it be the Mini, the regular, or the Max. Let's get started. Today I'm gonna to be using the Google Home Mini, but this will work with all the other Google Home devices. So first we need to head into the Google Home application on your phone or your tablet or whatever device you're using this on. This app of course works on iOS as well as Android. And then here we're gonna go into the top right of the home screen and go into the devices tab. When you're in the devices tab here, you'll see all the different devices that you have linked to your account. So here I have a speaker upstairs, I have different Chromecast devices, but this is our office speaker. So we're gonna go all the way down and find the office speaker right here. So I'm gonna tap on the menu, the three dot menu right here. And you have a few different options here. You have settings, create group, guest mode, and reboot. So today we're gonna to focus on the settings option. If you would like to learn how to create a group, you can click the link in the pop-up on screen as well as you can also check that out to see the guest mode option. Guest mode allows for anyone that's in your home without being connected to your Wi-Fi network, they can cast music to your Google Homes. So you wanna check out guest mode if you want that available. And then if you ever wanna reboot the Google Home, you can click right there, but let's go into the settings. So right here at the top, it is going to tell you who is linked to your account. So if I open this up, I currently have two different linked accounts and you can have up to six different linked accounts that will work with voice match. That's where you can find out who is linked to your account. And if you wanna remove your account from that Google Home device, you could select right there. Then the next is Google Assistant settings. So there are some personal Google Assistant settings that we can show you in another video, but here this is the Google Assistant settings for this. So if you're the first user, this is what is going to default for every other user that isn't linked to the Google Home. So here if I click on music and I want to play music, right now I have Google Play Music linked as the default music player. So if I ask it to play a song, it's going to play Google Play Music. So right here, you can change it to YouTube music. So say I want that to be my default player, it will automatically go there. If I want Spotify, I can select that. And then here you could link your account if you haven't already. So if you have a premium account, you wanna come in here and make sure you link that so you have all those features as well as Pandora. Now I should mention that some of these options are different depending on the country that you are in. Also, if you have an iOS device, you should see an option to link iTunes music. So you are able to control your iTunes music. If you have an iPhone, you can link it there and then you'll be able to control with the Google Home. So then you can of course just play any song and it will play from this music service or you can specify what song and what service you want it to play through. When I have Google Play Music as my default music player, I just need to say, hey Google, play 90s music. Sure, here's a Google Play Music station called Feelin' Good in the 90s. So there it defaulted to the Google Play Music. But then if I wanna do a Pandora radio station, hey Google, play Postal Service from Pandora. All right, check out this The Postal Service radio mix on Pandora. So there you can play from any of the music services without having it set as your default. You just need to specify what music service you would like to play from. So then here you can have no default provider if you want. Now let's go back and here we have home control. So I have set up all the home control devices on my account. So I've added different light bulbs and different light switches and everything right here within the home control. So usually you have one main account that can add all of these. If you wanna add any new devices, you just click the plus down here in the bottom right hand corner. Here you can see all the services that I have connected. And then if you wanna connect any other smart devices, you need to just find the service here. Make sure you set up that device previously on its own application and then you want to come in here and that is how you can add a smart device. So next we have the shopping list. So if I want to add something to the shopping list, all I need to do is say, hey Google, add chocolate to the shopping list. Okay, I've added chocolate to your shopping list. Then I just need to go into the shopping list and there are two ways you can view this. One is you can just go to a web browser and it will pull up the shopping list or you can download the Google Express application and get a few more options there. But let's just go into the web browser, check out what is on our shopping list. And here we can see that chocolate is right there. We've added a Google Home Mini. We have all these different items and you can just simply check them off right there just like that. And then you can also ask Google, hey Google, what's on my shopping list? 
The 22 items on your shopping list are Harmony Hub, Pizza, Pickles, Bananas, Pizza, Milk, and Dove Soap. So there you go, it knew everything on my list. So then to clear those out, you would go through here, check them off. You can also swipe over to check off things being done. And then if you wanna delete that item, you can swipe the other way. And if you wanna pull up your shopping list on any other device, just go to shoppinglist.google.com and make sure that you're signed into the same Google account that is linked to your Google Home. So under the more settings, we have more personalized items for you and your Google Assistant. So here we have personal info, preferences, payments, voice match, devices, services, and I am gonna do a full tutorial of this in another video, so stay tuned for that. All right, next we're gonna go under device info, and the first option is alarms and timer. So if you open that up, here it's gonna show the default setting for the alarm and timer. And you can turn that down or up right there, that's about all the settings that you have. Next, you have the name of the speaker. So right now, this is named Office Speaker. If you wanna change the name, you can come in here, edit this, and change it to anything that you would like, and then tap OK, and it will save that. Next, you have the Wi-Fi settings. So this is the current Wi-Fi network that it is on. Now, the Google Home does require a consistent Wi-Fi network, but let's say you wanna change this. You would just need to select Forget, and then it will pull up the option of new Wi-Fi networks that you could add it to. Now, one of the reasons you may want to use this, let's say you wanna take the Google Home Mini to a friend's house or a different family member's house. You can click Forget Network, and you would wanna do that while it's connected. Take the Google Home to the new location, turn it on, go back into the Google Home app, and then you could select Set Up on the new Wi-Fi network, and then it will link the Google Home to the new Wi-Fi. So then if you wanna bring it back, you'll just have to do the same thing, but that's how you could take it somewhere else and may be why you want to use the Wi-Fi settings there. Next, we have the guest mode. So guest mode allows others to connect to your Google Home without actually being on your Wi-Fi network so they can cast music and other applications to the Google Home. So if you have a guest over to your house and they're close to the Google Home and you have guest mode on, when they are in an app that supports casting and they click the cast button, it will then show your Google Home. They can select the Google Home and then type in this pin code and that will allow them to connect to your Google Home and cast their music. Now, I will leave a link for the full tutorial in the pop-up or the description below. So that is how you can use guest mode. The next option here is accessibility. So this is a really cool setting. So let's say you have your Google Home or Mini set somewhere where you can't see it. So when you start a request, it will give a light letting you know that it heard you. But what if you can't see that light? So here you can say, turn on a notification at the beginning of a request. So if I turn this on, when I give the hot word to the Google Home, it will verbally let me know that it heard me. So let me show you. Hey Google. So there you heard that little notification indicating that it heard you. So the other option is setting it for the end of the request. So that means that when you are done giving your request, so after the hot word and your phrase, it will give a notification that it is done. Hey Google, how tall is the Empire State Building? The Empire State Building is 1,250 feet tall. So there you can hear that at the finish of my request, it gave the notification letting me know that it heard me still and then it gave me the answer. So I do prefer the start of request if that is something that you are interested in. I think that's really great so that you don't have to repeat yourself multiple times. The next setting here is the preview program. So the preview program allows you to get on the latest updates early. So this isn't like beta features or anything. This is just a way that you can sign up to get the newest features as soon as they are available. So here you can come in and allow for notifications as well as join the program right there. And that will link to the Gmail account that you are currently on. And then it will automatically update your Google Home. Next you have enable night mode. So night mode is a really cool feature that if it's at night and you give a request to the Google Home, you never really know what volume it's at. So it may be really loud or really quiet, but here you can go into the night mode settings and choose what volume you want it to be at. So right here I can say, let's turn on night mode at 10 o'clock and then I want it to turn off at 6 a.m. And you can just go in, click edit, and then adjust the time right there for whatever you want it to be. And then right here, you can set for days of the week. So let's say on the weekend, you don't need to worry about night mode. You could change those settings right there. 
So now that you have that set on, you can also turn on do not disturb. So do not disturb means that whenever you have a notification like a broadcast or a reminder, it won't sound when do not disturb is on. And you turn on do not disturb, it is not gonna notify you on this device during night mode. Your alarms and timers will still alarm though. So essentially, if you set a reminder for 11 o'clock at night, it will not let you know verbally on the device. So here, I'm gonna turn that off. But then here you have the LED brightness at night. So if you wanna change how bright this is, you can see right there that it is changing as I scrub this bar. So you could change that. And then you can say the maximum volume at night. So it will tell you with a little dot notification. So if you would like it to be really quiet, make sure you turn it down here, or otherwise when you give your request, it's gonna be on the loudest volume and it's gonna wake everyone up in the house. So make sure you set that where it is, and that is how you have night mode, and then you can of course turn night mode on and off right there. Next we have the lower volume when listening. So let's say I am watching something on my Chromecast or I'm listening to something, when I give the hot word command, it's automatically gonna lower the volume of my Chromecast. So that means that it will be able to hear my request better when the Chromecast volume is lower. So that is how you would turn that on or off right there. So when it's blue, that means it's on. And then you can also learn more about that setting right there in the help and feedback option. Next, we have let others control your casted media. So when this option is enabled, and others are using Android phones, they'll see this little pop-up in their notification bar allowing them to control the music so they can play and pause or even stop the cast right there. Now, if you have this setting turned off, that means that they will not see that notification there. You can see that it has been disabled on my phone. This is a very helpful feature when you have others in your home that have Android phones so they can't control your media on your Wi-Fi. Next, we have the paired Bluetooth devices. So you can set up your Google Home as a Bluetooth device. So let's say some of the music options that I showed you, you don't use those, you use another application. Well, you can actually pair your phone to Bluetooth to the Google Home so it will play your music out of the Google Home device. So here, I can go into the settings. I just need to select Enable Pairing and now I can go into the Bluetooth settings of my device and then we will see that speaker pop up. So here we want to look for office speaker and there we have office speaker available. I tap there and then it will pair it and all my music would then come out of here. Now, not only my music, any and every notification from my phone will then come out of the Google Home Mini or whatever Google Home you're connected to. So then you can also set that up just by voice. So you could say the hot word and then enable Bluetooth and it will start the Bluetooth connection. You just need to go into the phone to pair it up. And then when you're done, you can say, hey Google, disable Bluetooth. Okay, Bluetooth is disconnected. So there, it turned off the Bluetooth right there and I no longer have access to that. So that is how you can quickly and easily pair Bluetooth. So then you can go back into the Bluetooth settings. Here you can see what devices have been paired and you can quickly turn them off. And then here you can enable Bluetooth pairing again. So that is how you do all the Bluetooth settings. Next, we have the default media playback. So is what this option will allow you to do. So if you ask your home device to play music or a video or whatever it is, you can have it set to a default Chromecast or audio device. So here I have a few different types of speakers. One, I have just my normal Google Home devices, or here I have an audio group. I also have different TVs. So here I have one called Basement TV, Family Room TV, and then here I have uh, some other Chromecast that I can use. So let's say I have my Google Home right next to my TV that has a nice sound system already set up and it has a Chromecast plugged in. So let's say I don't want the audio to come out of the Google Home Mini, I want it to come out of my TV with the sound system and everything all at once. So all I need to do in the media playback settings is come in here and I would choose that TV that I want it to play to. So I would say I want it to default to the Chromecast Ultra, and this is the media portion. So here it says listen on. So if you have any music, this is where it would default to. So here I could say this speaker, that means when I ask it to play music, it will start here. Or let's say I want it to play on my Chromecast audio device, I could choose that one, or the Google Home Max, or even the home audio group that I've set up. That is where you can listen to. 
So let's say I want this Office speaker to always play on my Office Chromecast. I can come down here to watch on and then I can say the Chromecast Ultra, which is my Office speaker. So then instead of saying play tech with Brett on YouTube on Chromecast Ultra, you would just need to say play tech with Brett on YouTube and it will automatically play on your Chromecast device. So that is how you use the media playback default options. I find it very handy to have and really grateful that you can choose exactly what speaker or TV that you want your content to play on. And then next you have the do not disturb. So you can turn this on and is what that will do is if you have any reminder set or if anyone is trying to broadcast a message throughout the home, this Google Home device would not receive any of those verbal notifications. So it's not gonna say you have a reminder or it's time for dinner. None of that will come through when you enable do not disturb. Then we're gonna to go to one of the last settings here, which is equalizer. So let's say you're listening to music or maybe the different room that you have, you don't want as much bass on your Google Home. You can come in here and turn it down up to negative six decibels. And then you can also turn it up six decibels so you can hear the difference in the bass when you do that while you're playing music. And then you can also change the treble. So if I want that to be down or up, you can adjust those settings right there. So that's really nice. If you wanna add a little bass to your device or turn it down, you have full control of that. And those settings are available for all the different Google Home devices. Then the last few things that you have here is you can have Google automatically collect data about crash reports and everything and have those be sent. So you can turn that on and off right there. And then if you wanna check the software firmware version, you can go right here under information and there you can see the system firmware version, you can see cast firmware version, the language it's set up, the Mac ID and the IP address all right there on the information tab under the device settings. So that is it for the settings that you have on your Google Home device. Now I do wanna show you that the only difference if you have say a Google Home Max is one setting that allows you to have multiple Maxes paired together. So here we can go through and we'll see all the same settings except for right here we have the speaker pair. So this is how you could pair two Google Home Maxes together. Now this is different than setting up a group. A pair actually allows them to be a surround sound stereo speaker so you have the right and left channels with the group and that's with the Google Home Max. But every other device can be paired together so you can pair the Mini, the Max, as well as a regular Google Home together through a group. And to do that you go in here and click the settings and create the group. So if you guys have any further questions about any of these settings, please leave a comment below. I'd be happy to make a full in-depth tutorial about any of these features. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe so that you can be notified of my new and upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.